fact that we have two esteemed colleagues from different parties, pro-independence parties here, uh, is, is testament to the fact that So this discussion is strictly about independence and not about no, no party politics. They will not be will not be tolerated. So uh, I just want to get that out of the way. Okay. So I, I'm sure most of you have gotten the uh, this document here. And I'd, what I'd like kind of like to do is to go through these different elements. Uh, as, 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 are there still are there still people that don't have uh, a copy of this? Uh, do do we have? Um, let's see. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, so, so these the um, if uh, if you still don't have one uh, that would. Uh, uh, let's see. So, so what we've done is we've gone through the different sessions that we've had uh, with regard, uh, over the over the course of Friday, Saturday, and today. Uh, and we and uh, my uh, my uh, my handy scribe John has gone through and uh, raised the central questions out of them. So the the format that I'd like to do is just to go through the question, you know, the questions one by one, and mostly get questions from you, ideas from you. Uh, I'm a big believer in collective wisdom. Wisdom, and I believe that you know it, it, nobody has a monopoly on good ideas. And so, uh, if you have a if you have a point or an, a uh, a question or a, just a really good idea regarding these, uh, that would be good. Uh, that that you're, you're, it's more than welcome. Uh, also, what we'd like to try to do, or at least begin to, in the limited time that we have together with us this afternoon, is to begin to form groups. Uh, research groups, working groups around these different subjects, and any and you don't have to be necessarily be an expert on uh, the uh, on the, uh, to to participate uh, and to uh, be and and all all that needs is a will is a, is a willingness to learn to seek out good information and uh, and uh, good research on the different topics and more of as kind of a, a play a role as kind of a research coordinator or a participant or, or what have you. So again, I, I, don't ex, I don't expect this afternoon to be able to get all of these groups formed, but I will be moving, uh, meeting hopefully on Wednesday with some of my co colleagues and we all ha we have all your emails. Uh, we need to see how to, uh, to kind of organize these groups on the website so that people can participate, uh, you know, add documents, this type of thing. But this is just the beginning of this uh, process. Uh, I do hope, uh, and I again, the, I don't know what form this will take. I do hope to be able to come back here to Scotland at the end of October for another meeting of some sort. I don't know if it will be in this format. That's completely to be decided, uh, depending on how things go. Uh, but but uh, so I, that 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 is another another uh, another objective in seeing you know in in getting uh, moving towards a, a fairly regular. Uh, um, you know, a meeting, uh, you know, physical meeting, so that we can advance on these particular uh, topics. Uh, so, um, uh, so again, this is kind of a fr free flowing. Uh, I, there isn't really a, a much of a, st a structure around it uh, in, the, in, the, in this meeting, in the sense that again, we're going to go through these topics. Uh, and and but I, I but I, uh, I I I kind of referred to it as a, a kind of a Quaker meeting on Scottish independence, where you know I, I don't know how many, how many of you have ever been to Quaker meeting, but there's no there's no priest, there's no minister. People just sit down, and when the light, when the inner light comes to them, they can stand up and 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 say something spiritually meaningful. But there's no dogma, there's no ob obligatory beliefs, and all all beliefs and and thoughts are welcome. I, I am a Quaker. I have seen the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, I have many ancestors that were Quakers as well. Um, yes. <clears throat> wait, uh, wait, where's the where's the rover? Where's the rover microphone? Uh, I think, you know, not online, not online they can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. right. uh, as Scotland moves forward towards independence, hopefully, how much more draconian, or will they become draconian, the British state? Because there is no case in history that Britain gave up a colony willingly 
even in Bermuda, uh, Barbados, 23 people died in order to achieve independence. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I, I can't remember if it was Duncan Sands, but when Malta achieved its independence, somebody like Duncan Sands said, oh, they'll be bankrupt in six weeks. But in actually six weeks, Malta had started making uh, trade negotiations with other countries and it was a successful little country. So what does the panel think that they will do? Because we're not going to have to just accept it. We will have to respond in kind mm -hmm. to what the draconian measures. They have already started in some senses by removing our industry, like the wind generating industry out of Scotland um, by stealth. So how do you think they will behave and how should we react to it in a non-violent way, of course. Anybody want to have a crack at that? Or? I have to, to comment on that. I think I mean, it's, uh, it's a very significant challenge, but um, I think what we've got to understand is that that pushback has already begun. I think if anybody has read the words of Ledge Trust today, um, which is attempting to put the boot into any sense of Scottish democracy or any sense of self-governance for Scotland. I mean, my response to that, and it's been a topic of discussion throughout this weekend, uh, certainly in the Salvo discussions, which is that everything we've done up until now has been conducted within the framework of the UK constitutional arrangement. So Holyrood is part of the UK constitutional arrangement, Westminster is part of that, the UK Supreme Court, Court is part of that. So everything that we've attempted to do has been within the confines of that. And what we need to prepare for is that if the UK government want to demonstrate very clearly to the world that they are treating us as a colony, that they are preventing democracy from being allowed to flourish and the Scottish people to have their say, and that's a very important step towards independence. So we need to accept that. But we need to prepare for the international case beyond that. And that's been a, a theme that's run through many of the, the, the discussions this week uh, or this weekend. And the Estonia example that Ian Lawson presented was, was a, a really good case study in how you corral all of those, um, those different aspects together. So I think, you know, we shouldn't get disheartened by the current situation. But we have to prepare for all eventualities and um, Paul McCartney's comments yesterday about you know, asking ourselves some of the really difficult questions, the hurdles that we're going to have something that we have to make a commitment to see through. So what we can't do is allow ourselves to get disheartened <laughs> by rejection we have to be prepared for it because it seems in all likelihood that's the gambit that they will go with but it's not the end of the game thank you okay, okay. um who has the microphone Come back there <laughs> uh, sorry um following on from that neil it was backing up what uh, Sarah was saying about um, the claim of right and building a constitution on that, which would be uh, recognised internationally. You know, most uh, what I heard yesterday, uh, if you had a written constitution, it's more easy to recognise as a nation and your sovereignty. Um, is there any kind of time scales that you think we should be working within? Okay. I could. I'll, I'll take a stab at that. I think that, that there are. There has been already a lot of work done. I mean, there have been many. Uh, I've, I've drafted a constitution. I know that uh, 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 a constitution, uh, a constitution for Scotland, has uh, has done work. Uh, Elliot Bulmer, who was on an earlier uh, a presentation, has done a lot of work. So the the, the, the uh, you know the, 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 the much of the heavy lifting is done. I think it's a question at this point, and and so. I get. I, I. I. don't think. I, I don't think. You know. We need. To, uh, I think that. You know. One. Some kind of provisional constitution could be adopted at any time. And. And. It, but I think that. 
what we need to begin to do is to really look, begin the planning, and that's part of the, the function of this of this group. Is yes, to, and that's I, I do want to get to you know after some of the questions, I do want to get to you know begin to form the groups that will work on these specific areas. And this is this will not be in contradiction to anything that the Scottish government is doing or any planning that they're doing. Uh, and the, the more you know, the more information, the more research, the better. Uh, supplementing information can only be uh, can only be uh, good, but it's also important to uh, plan so that we have a clear vision of what Scotland uh, can be. I, I, I felt that in the first referendum that not enough information was given, and I remember my uncles. Uh, I was asking him, "Well, you know, are you gonna, would you vote for independence?" And he was saying, "Well, how much is going to cost me, Alex Salmon? How much is it going to cost me?" You know, and and um, you know, I mean, that, that's the uh, kind of question that's a little bit, you know, kind of plural, but it, it is. Uh, but but there uh, but there was such a kind of a reluctance to, well, do we keep the queen? Do we keep the pound? Da da da. And and but and this is a very different environment. You know, and it's it, before it was like, well, we don't want to rock the boat. We want to bring the nose with us, da 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 da. But now it's like this is a very different context. Yes, you know, we we're out of, out of the EU. Uh, the the uh, the Westminster Tory led West, Westminster government is schizophrenic and melting down, uh, and imposing more and more draconian laws. And we need, you know, it, there needs to be very quickly some way out. You know, I don't think it can, I, can, I don't think it can last another. I mean, if we wait a year, that's too much. Yeah. Uh, and so, and I mean, who, who knows? I mean, uh, you know, it, and so it's it, and so we need. To, that's why we're beginning this work, and that's why I, you know, people of good faith, of goodwill, uh, that are that want to work on these different working groups is so important, because the more groundwork that's done now, the less later, the more prepared, the more the more of a solid basis that you have upon which to build a state. Uh, and so, um, uh, again, I, but I think that, you know, uh, I don't know what the time scale is. I mean, we've got this list of different uh, topics that need to be addressed. Uh, and, um, and so I think each of the different topics is going to have a different time scale. I think, you know, I think getting together some kind of written constitution could be very quickly done relatively quickly, but how do you adapt it to what the political system is and what people, uh, what people want? Okay. All right, uh, go, go ahead, Paul. Uh, quickly follow up, because uh, if I heard the question right, it was about would a particular kind of constitution facilitate getting international recognition? And the answer is no. All other states care about is that there is a functioning government able to maintain order and engage in international relations. The form of government is irrelevant. The way institutions are organized is irrelevant. Just that it can govern itself and engage in foreign policy. And that's, and that's all that needs to be demonstrated to satisfy other, other states. So really, the, the task doesn't hinge on a lot of the variables that are, um, that are being examined here, which have a different sort of value. But for recognition, it, it really doesn't matter. Just, so I, I would say the, ex the existence of Holyrood is, is enough already because wh whatever you think about how well it's doing what it's doing, it's doing more than what some states that are currently independent sovereign states are able to do in their own, like Afghanistan, for example. So it, it really the, ex the, the, the bar is very low and Scotland has already cleared it. So there, there are five general expectations and Scotland has them all already. So. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I've, I've learned a lot uh, this weekend, and mostly from the, the platform, but... Um, oh, sorry. Did I switch it on by mistake? <laughs> um, yeah, I've learned a lot this weekend, mostly from the platform, but also from some of the people, fellow people that are, are here, fellow members. Um, what, what, one thing was uh, a, um, a plaque which I believe is in the Houses of Parliament in London, uh, says, we have catched Scotland and we must bind her tight. Uh, I think that was issued after the, the union was formed. Um, 
So, uh, and another thing linking with that is, I've also learned from, which I should have known, but I didn't, from a fellow um, attendee, uh, that uh, anybody that's on the Privy Council in, in, in Westminster, which, which can include SNP members, uh, which um, I'm not criticising SNP members for that, I'm just suggesting they've got one hand tied behind the back, because apparently, uh, if you're on the Privy Council, you, you, you're not allowed to speak against the union. Um, so, uh, is that correct? And if it is, you know, just, I just want to highlight the difficulties that exist in the current arrangement and why it could help greatly if an outside body uh, was to lead on this and, and hopefully bring the SNP and Alpha and S uh, any other, any other um, political party that might it's either form or might form with us, you know. I, mean, you want to, yeah. uh, I think first of all, the, just on the Privy Council argument, uh, you know, I think we've got Stuart Rosie, who's a, a current member, and that because he serves on the uh, Security and Intelligence Committee. Uh, but I mean, we've had other members, I think, uh, as well, Ian Blackford and uh, Alex Salmond, and previous uh, previous life as an MP serve the Privy Council as well. So, you know, and there, there's no, um, I don't think that stopped any of these three from campaigning and supporting independence in any shape or form. In fact, probably quite the opposite in quite a few of these cases. Uh, so there is that responsibility uh, being part of that British, British state mechanism, but, you know, I don't think it stops us uh, from actually acting in the way that we think we think fit. Um, there was a couple of questions earlier, earlier on from the gentleman in front, and maybe just sort of slip back to that just for a second, uh, because I, th I think it's really important that, you know, I think as Neil says, the, you know, what we are going to be facing uh, over the coming months is something that we've not experienced before. If you think 2014 was bad in yeah. terms of what the British state could do, thought they could do, et cetera, et cetera, then you know you ain't seen nothing yet because they are desperate to hold on to scotland because they know the resources that they need lie here mm -hmm. yeah. now, that's a message that we really need to get across to every single household in scotland every single household that will struggle uh, to heat their homes in the next 12 months and already struggling uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I heard a guy on today from one of the trade unions saying that, um, you know, they're, 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 they've got people who are having to give up, um, you know, going into work because they can't afford the bus fare to actually get to work. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of argument that we should be using right, left and centre, doesn't matter who, which part of the, the political spectrum you're from. And I think what we need to do, that you're saying, what can we do? is we, every time that we have something coming from a Westminster minister, the prime minister, the royal family, whoever it is, we see that as a fantastic opportunity to make the case to the people of Scotland. Because one, the British establishment, they like the idea that they own Scotland, that they have access to resources. But you know what? They don't understand Scotland, which means that every, week, every day, every hour, they'll be putting their big feet into something that yeah. they really don't understand. And it's up to us to say, you know, what a stupid thing to say, like, like the, uh, Sunak said, was it last week, that they- Firm, they, they firm with Nicola Sturgeon. They, 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 they had invested in Scotland in Darling. uh, and, and Darlington. <laughs> so, you know, you know, we couldn't wish for a bigger gift than having this current government uh, in our step towards independence. Yeah. And I think we, we see every possible opportunity and seize it as an opportunity to ridicule, to undermine, and to make sure that that message gets to the people of Scotland. People of Scotland are not stupid, yeah. and they'll pick up on these things, yeah. and they'll pick up really, really fast. And I think, I mean, I saw a poll, I think it was just a made up poll today, 55% in favour of independence, 45 uh, for um, for remaining in the union, and my gut feeling is we're way beyond that at the moment. Uh, and I just hope that what we can do over the next period is actually move that consensus 
into either supporting a, a referendum and if a, a referendum is refused opportunity then we move on to a general election general election is hold is held under uk rules it's their it's their baby it's their big idea and that's what we can do now i see people shaking their heads but if you can come up with better solutions then i'm an ideas guy well, i'm happy we, to we have happy, <laughs> happy, to, happy to listen happy to listen Thank you, thank you very much, no. but one... Hold on a minute. Yeah. Call on the SNP for a paper ballot and a hand count for the referendum. One, two. Uh, it's, right. not, it's not folks, party political. No. Yeah, yeah. folks, I was just going to remind remind every delegate here we're not here to discuss party politics or make scores. Uh, we are here to discuss independence. So, hand, questions about what's been going on would be great. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Um, Neil, uh, Neil, and then and then. Uh, uh, yeah, just one more point. Once yeah, please, please go ahead. Uh, you, you might have other ideas on how to how to do this and you know that, that needs to be respected but and, and listened to but the, the big thing for me is is it recognized internationally and is it legal and these are the these are the big the big points is it legal will it be recognized internationally if the answer to any of these questions is no then you need to have a better idea and you need to have a better solution because what we cannot do is end up where we're into a constant arena where we've just got stalemate between London and Edinburgh. Well, that's right. That is not helping the people who need to pay bills. Exactly. That is not helping the economy of Scotland. And that's not taking back our resources that we deserve to have. Could I just, there is, so, so within the framework, in which we've been talking about independence and struggling for independence. If you're an MP, you have a very specific job that you're voted on to do, and that is to fight within that framework yep. every step of the way for the people of Scotland. And I have to say that we have two MPs with one hell of a track record of doing exactly that. <laughs> but what some of us have come to understand clearly is that this framework is set up, controlled, directed, oh, yeah. and, gate, and, and, the, and the gatekeepers are set by the British establishment. So you guys can give your lifeblood everything you've got within that framework, and they will still, they will still do what they're going to do. They, they own the playing field, they own the rules, they own the gates, and we keep desperately trying to win and find a way from within that framework to win. You look at what happened with the referendum. Not, forget, forget the shake, you know, pictures and blah, blah, and the weird postal ballot results. And look at the Edinburgh Agreement. And look at the control of the media and what international regulations yeah. say about it. So, and then they told us that a purely advisory referendum was binding forever. We couldn't challenge any of the things they did because it was an advisory referendum and you can't have a judicial review. But once it was done, it was permanently binding forever. We cannot win. So what we can do that is democratic and that is going to be recognized as legal is we can go right around the system. We can ask the international community when we have the standing to do it. And it's not that hard an ask to recognize that we have an international treaty an inter, and an international treaty is not subject to domestic law. They have the Dicean absurdity, which would not stand up but as well as a snowman in a fire if it got to the international community to be ruled on. That's a fact. We're not asking to, to recognize independence before we've had a vote. We're not saying we're doing something without the democratic will of the people. We're asking them to recognize an international legal reality. That's it. That constitution, that treaty comes with a binding condition. We're ask, we ask them to recognize the international provisions of a, an international treaty 
entered into by two sovereign nations. From the argument that somehow, because England's parliament was sovereign at the time, and Scotland completely extinguished itself, which is absolute rubbish, means that the, the English act of ratification, because they were sovereign and not the Queen, somehow supersedes the treaty. Look, that would be laughed out of the house and under any international hearing, but it's never been taken there. It's never been tested. And I've talked to Joanna Cherry about this. This has never been tested. We know what they would find. Once we get that, with a huge civic movement behind it, the sovereignty of the Scottish people, which we are dependent on, Douglas, which is about to go under Section 38 of the EU Withdrawal Bill and a brand new Act of Union, which is completely unlawful under the Scottish Constitution, is upheld and safeguarded. And we also have a mechanism for considering whether the union has been breached because the condition of that union has been fundamentally violated. So what we have is support for our politicians coming from the grassroots movement, support for an, another convention, conven, um, Scottish Constitutional Convention, support that says that the international community now absolutely respects Scotland's constitution and therefore respects the sovereign right of the Scottish people to set the terms the ballpark, the ball, the team. Neil, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean, this, the, the, the short comment is that um, both Douglas and Sarah are absolutely correct. Um, Douglas is correct in that, uh, in terms of the international audience, it's sensible to have attempted to progress uh, the case for independence through the UK institutions. That's a sensible thing to do, not to be hotheads, not to get into conflict uh, uh, as others have done at an early stage. And um, the, the key thing, so reflecting on in, in 2014, now no one would deny that Alec Salmond was the figurehead of the Yes movement back then, but he would probably be the first to admit that he wasn't responsible for guiding or driving the Yes movement. That came from the grassroots. And the grassroots was what made 2014 really come to life and happen. And that is um, why both things are, are important. So we need to exhaust the avenues in uh, the within the UK context, but that doesn't prevent us from doing the work that this uh, meeting has been considering this weekend to look at all different avenues. And the one take home for me from the weekend really is the Estonia situation where they planned, uh, they had an exacting roadmap of how they were going to move forward. And that included everything. Now they were occupied by the USSR at that time, so the Soviets. And um, I think Alfred's stuff uh, around colonialism has illustrated that we are uh, an occupied territory in many respects, and so we have to burst out of that, that mindset. But we do have a, an absolutely urgent humanitarian crisis, as Douglas has alluded to, uh, with the cost of living crisis, and that is an absolute affront uh, because of the vast wealth that Scotland possesses. Now, all of these disparate things, the claim of right, international treaties, the UN Charter, all of that kind of stuff, on its own is not a silver bullet. But when you bring those strands together and you mount a convincing argument and you're able to progress that in a peaceful uh, and intelligent way, you articulate that to the people. And there are various other, I mean, I could go on forever, but there's various other things that we've uh, considered this week that are, uh, this weekend, which are really important strands. Scottish citizenship, for yeah. example. There are lots of these really exciting opportunities. What we must do is to step outside of the UK context and think about Scotland and its journey to independence as that country, as that ancient country, not just within a UK context. Uh, Douglas, go ahead, yeah, maybe just before the next question. And also say that um, on Sarah's point, I mean, one of, one of the about international recognition, one of the things that strikes me as a member of parliament, and we, we do a lot of outreach to other countries and, and um, 
you know, I, I, I chaired the, the All Party Group on Catalonia, uh, who have had their own experience. I was an international observer at their referendum uh, way back in 2016. Uh, and the difficulty we had at that point was actually trying to take that case to Brussels or take it to an international body to say, this is how the people of Catalonia have voted. And uh, but it's, to get an international body to actually recognize that legitimate, what we thought was a legitimate vote, they, we just couldn't get that message over. And they've struggled ever since. Uh, what they're doing now is actually building up their strength through, um, they've got a, a, an assembly uh, of uh, citizens and, and parties and, and yes. different things like that. So that actually that grassroots movement has a structure yes. which they can build on. The politics is something aside, it's, yes. you know, people yeah. are going about parties or yeah. whatever. Yeah. The party political system is yeah. separate, you know, yes. get that Absolutely. in your head. Yes. And, and then what you guys need to do is actually work on that community engagement, the engagement you have with your neighbours in the streets and, and so on, and that's your job. We've got a different kind of job yeah. at Westminster yeah. and we need to take these people on down there. You need to get the message out uh, up here come on. and that's where we need everybody to work together on that. And I know that's been a difficult journey uh, for everybody over the last uh, few years, but it's something we need to try and get over and try and start to work together. But I can tell you that... But everywhere I go, I, 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 I mess about Catalonia, I also do a lot of work with the Nordic countries. Every time I go to a, a meeting or it's on Zoom or whatever, first question out the bag, when Scotland become an independent? You know, every time, Everybody wants. every single time, there's a huge amount of goodwill out there in the international community already. So if we start going off a, a, a jaunty angle, or going off that way, and saying we're not going to, we're not going to do, oh, do it. Can you go off? We're for independence, man. The rest of the world waiting for it. Okay, so but well, well, what I did, what I did want to ask you. Right. Right. I, I know we're, we're all frustrated by the the, the, the mm -hmm. and we're all impatient for for what what we need we know needs to happen. But what I'm trying to say is, and explain to you, is that we already have a, a, a bag load of goodwill out there. You know, let's keep on that track and make sure we stick to a, a democratic way of getting to our independence so that we can, one, hold our own heads up high to see we've done it properly. But secondly, to make sure that it actually sticks and, uh, you know, nobody's going to bring it into question in future years. And what do you think? Oh, sorry, that's my view. So I, don't, I, I see somebody. Sorry, very, just ahead. very quickly, and, the, and your colleagues in the other countries that say, when are you going to become independent? What do you think that they would accept as, I mean, obviously peaceful and democratic a process? But what, do, you think, do you think they see it as that there could be other ways besides a referendum to achieve independence? I mean, what do you think they would accept as legitimate? No, I, I, I think that that is exactly what they are they are looking for. And using the Catalonia example, even although they had uh, what a lot of people recognise as being a legitimate process, it's, it's still being rejected by a lot of people, uh, you know, across the international community. Can I, Mark, and that's can the difficulty. Just, just, sorry, Neil, a quick point. Yeah. You quick so, point, and then, quick uh, point. and then, yeah. So, so if, go, go ahead, Neil. If the route to an independence referendum is uh, uh, blocked by Westminster, and if they say that they won't recognise a plebiscite election, I think there are points around that to discuss. Then um, one of the tools that, that the uh, Estonians used because they didn't have the opportunity of a referendum because they were under Soviet rule was they signed people up for Scottish citizenship. <laughs> and that is a, that's a pure expression of where you belong. Um, can I just, I was just going to add, Mark. Just to say, you know, one of the problems with Catalonia is that it's recognised as a region that's trying to secede, where Scotland is recognised as a nation. And the other part to that is that we're not looking, you know, there has to be recognition. There, there, there are, as you know, there are, there are definitions for what kind of an organisation or body has standing <clears throat> under the UN rules to bring a petition. So we're well aware that we will need to create a movement which satisfies the requirements for standing to bring a petition to the International Court of Justice.
not to say we're independent because you have to have a vote for that yeah. at some point nobody's saying you can't, can't but to move the conversation out of Westminster's grasping greedy little hands and put it back in our people yeah and that's the point Hi, um, both yourself, Neil and Dougie, um, have very um, correctly highlighted just how much um, energy and resources are being asset stripped down to England. At the moment, the cost of life crisis is affecting English people as much as Scottish people. And we stand with a, a Westminster government that's extremely right wing and I would say extremely unsteady. Uh, that's not a safe or a good combination. You asked for tools as to how you might address this. Um, at the moment, England has a deficit in electricity use of about 11%, most of which is met by Scotland's renewables. It, so it generates electricity through gas turbines, 45% electricity through gas turbines, and 65% of the UK's gas comes from Scottish territorial waters. Mm -hmm. So at a minimum, that's another 10% of England's electricity that's being produced from Scottish assets. Now with that in mind, as good neighbours and statesmen, would you consider telling the, the poor people of England you're being robbed by the energy companies who are being propped up by a right-wing government, encouraging them to do so? An independent Scotland will provide you the same amount of energy at a reasonable price, which is what we don't get at the moment. But a provision of doing that is that you insist that your politicians, your English politicians, sort out the robber barons. You don't get any electricity, you don't get any gas until you do that. And by putting that political hot potato right into their game, into the hands of the English voters, you empower them. You prove that we are the good neighbours we always said we would be. You are the statesmen, right? But more than anything, you put into the collective consciousness of the English people just how much they're robbing us of our assets, our country's assets. It becomes beyond debate. It becomes a matter of reality. It becomes a very, very powerful political tool, but it empowers them to sort out these bastards down in Westminster. <laughs> Hi, um, I'd just like to say thank you very much for everything. Uh, it's been a really good weekend, uh, very enlightening. Um, but one of my questions is, it's regarding our claim of right. And we know that we want to take our claim of right forward to the United Nations and to the highest court to get it away from Westminster. Now, we've already talked about timescales. But we need to be a little bit clearer about how many people do we need in our movement to be able to approach the UN. Um, because for I know we're non-political at the moment, but we're not getting the pass that we would like from our existing political parties. So um, I would really like to know how much further do we have to go with numbers? How quickly can we get our Scottish citizenship up and running? And, you know, is everyone here prepared to put themselves up to work for this? Absolutely everybody in this room. Um, uh, 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 David, could you give that to, to Paul for a minute? I just wanted to get his view on that. Uh, as, uh, is there a quantifiable number that would need to bring standing? Is it possible that these things are judiciable in a court? How would no. <laughs> I, 
I've been waiting to ask this question for a wee while, and the person just too, too, too um, sorry. Uh, Sally. Sally. Sally in front of me, um, she got in first, and I'm very glad that she did, because I was asking a very similar point, uh, because I, I don't know what the six methods are uh, that you suggested to, to get to independence. I can think of only four. I'm a late comer, by the way, so I, I, I don't know what's, what's been happening over the last two days. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, presu I, presume, I, presume, I presume that the six, me six methods to independence are all front door methods. And really what Sally was talking about there is what I've been thinking for a wee while, actually a backdoor method too, because we do need a backdoor method. Um, well, I don't know if we need one, but a backdoor method won't do any harm uh, because uh, it's about, well, it's, it's the early 60s uh, since, I, since I've come to this country to settle in it. I came from England and there's not a lot of satisfaction in England with Westminster at the moment, as you can understand. and. Um, there's a, there's a, a, Northumberland, a Northumberland party. There's um, there's all sorts of moves for English parliaments, English uh, English national anthems. I mean these uh, these women that are that are, have done so well. These English women that have done so well, and uh, um, I, I don't know I don't know what the result will be. But the anthem down there will probably be "God Save the Queen," and. They're English. They, do, they deserve their own, Anglo, their, their own anthem. And they don't have one. And really, we, we should try to empower the English as well as ourselves, in my opinion. This chat was next. Um, I just wanted to ask a little bit more of Sarah because she brought up, am I shouting? I didn't. Um, Sarah, you mentioned about William of Orange um, offering Darien. Now, in the 1690s, that was a massacre of Glencoe. Everybody's talking about, we don't know what they're going to do to keep us this time. What they did to get us in, first of all, giving Darien, but then acting in Parliament to say that no English man is allowed to invest in a Darien exhibition, ex, ex, expedition. No English port was allowed to build any of the ships that were to be part of the Darien expedition. And no colony or no part of the empire was allowed to help any of the Scots on the Darien expedition. Now there's a the feeling that we were incapable of running a decent Darien expedition, but our Westminster Parliament purposely bankrupted our country to get it in 1707. And it was a massive conspiracy of various different departments of Westminster. Now that we've got much more power, what's going to happen now is going to be extraordinary. We're going to have to be very imaginative in protecting this attempt to get our independence. Sarah, could you talk a little bit more about that? Because you were just getting started when you were talking about it. I think we've heard, we've heard a lot. Let's, let's, I, just, just, I just want to say, let's try to keep everything very short and brief. Uh, I, I know, and also, I, I'm very happy to hear the historical everything, but we really want to talk about how we go forward. And there was very much the scope, and Thanks, so let's yeah. let's keep the scope towards the future. Not not that yeah, the past yeah. didn't occur, but I'm very interested in, 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 in as, while we have this opportunity uh, to to question our uh, you know MPs that that we uh, of course do so respectfully, but also say you know what can we do now and how do we go forward? So. We've also just to let you know we've had quite a few uh, questions from our online audience, so okay. um, Jeff's collating them for you. Okay. So in answer to your question, as I had been about to say, Mark, I think we heard a lot of those that this weekend. We do know that, what, that, that we're up against a dishonorable, corrupt, lawless, rogue establishment that makes and breaks the law as it sees fit in its own interest 
and barely covers it up with a lie that leaves you gasping. They'll do whatever they need to do for the reasons that we know and that don't lead out so well. They, they, they can't do without our water. They can't do without the, the subsidized electricity. We've got, we've got um, five, five and six million people in Scotland, or the latest figures are, and they have 55 million. And yet, what we produce, I think, is it 40% in terms of GDP? Is it something, or 37? Yeah. So divide that up, and they get to divide, they get to keep 63% you know, of the resources and the output and what, and that's not counting what goes out, out, out of English ports, it's counted as English and not Scottish. And we get to divide, and they divide that up between 55 million people, and we get to divide ours up between five. It's not a very difficult figure to, to, to calculate. They can't afford to let us go. So yes, they're going to do extraordinary things. The obvious things, and I'm sure, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to take up Doug's time, but later, but it would be good to find out. The obvious things they're, they're doing and have been doing is challenging uh, territorial boundaries in terms of oil and gas. Um, you know, there'll be, there'll be um, arguments over crown provisions um, and, and that that stays with the crown. And there'll be all kinds of tricks. They're already bringing in bills. <clears throat> so they've brought in, they're bringing in a new agricultural um, bill, which means that cheap, low standard, well, actually just dangerous level foods that, that, that can be, they can have poisons in them, they can be GMO, they can be this, that, and the other. They can be brought into Scottish markets, not Scottish, not English. No consultation with the Scottish government, no consultation with Scottish MPs. They've just done it. There's already how do we how do we get every single thing we can out of this country yeah. and how do we slam down well we know that they're going to slam down so let's look at everything that has come up this weekend the big thing that is going to be required our scottish politicians have already been talking about it this little ace in the hole that scotland has which is called the sovereignty of the scottish people and that if you're going to invoke it, be careful what gods you call upon, because mm -hmm. sometimes they come. Sovereignty is not the right to vote, that's democracy. Sovereignty was defined by the High Court in the Miller um, versus whatever case, yeah. Yeah. where they defined Westminster sovereignty. Take that, apply it to the Scottish people. All that's missing is a mechanism. We can ask, we can do all kinds of creative things. So we can ask the Scottish government, for instance, to acknowledge that yes, as the executive, Scottish executive of Westminster, they are directly legally answerable to Westminster that created them under the Scotland Act. But under the principle of Scottish popular sovereignty, which Westminster has accepted and simply needs to abide by, Westminster is answerable in Scotland to the people, which means that the Scottish Parliament is answerable to the people. So that the highest authority in Scotland is the people. And if they've given a, a mandate for a referendum, for instance, Sorry, Westminster sovereignty is trumped by pop. There are all kinds of things we can start asking them to do, and it can come from us. Can we, uh, we'd like to get a cut to a couple of the online questions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Impossible. Okay, uh, lightening the mood a little bit. Um, someone uh, called a Malka dog. Uh, also known as Brian, question is, would a We Read book on Scots history pre to post 1707 and to the present day help to educate and inform? Second question from Marsa Jeddah, how much work is actually going on to convince uh, the uh, overseas countries of Scots' right to reclaim our sovereignty? And when will the EU come out with support and recognise Scottish independence, unconditionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, just pick up on the um, how we look forward point, because that ties into the history thing. So um, where we are at the moment um, is that we've got um, one of the most shambolic, corrupt UK governments ever with yeah. a UK prime minister who broke the law. And we have probably two of the least well-equipped people uh, buying out to take over um, uh, from him. We have a, an impossibly difficult economic system uh, situation globally, but particularly here. 
And so things are not going to be straightforward for any UK government over the next number of years. So it is absolutely the right time to push ahead with our preparation and our work um, in the temple, because while they are while they are consumed with the day-to-day -day dealing with all of that, they won't have the energy to challenge some of the important things that we are considering this weekend. Um, and um, so it, it's absolutely the right uh, time to, to push forward. What was the second point? Um, okay. History and then, it was also about the history. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that's important. What was the second point? I didn't quite catch that. Second question, sorry, second question was, is how much work is actually going right. on yeah, yeah. to convince? Uh, not enough is the, the <laughs> not enough. Um, uh, and, you know, that's something that, that, you know, I know Douglas has done some, uh, I, and um, I intend to be doing some uh, in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to speak in Corsica, an independence conference with people from across Europe, so I'll be um, tapping into that reserve. But one of the key things that I thought we would be doing in Westminster was using that platform to speak to ambassadors across the world without having to fly out here, there and everywhere to begin to get, take the temperature and build up an international picture. I don't think enough's been done on that. It's not being coordinated enough. And we really need to get a, 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 a you know, get a move on. Okay. Hi, um, Douglas, you asked earlier if anybody had a better idea about how to do this legally and um, in a way that the um, international community would recognise it. Instead of using the Westminster franchise, why not use the Scottish government elections? Um, where we have 16 and 17 year olds voting and EU citizens can also vote. I think um, if I understood the question properly, the, um, I'm a little bit deaf on this slide, so I don't always pick up uh, every, every single word, unfortunately. But the, um, just, just to say, I think that the, what we've got in Scotland is ultimately we, we need to get Westminster to the, to the table to actually discuss how we either move on to independence and divvy up the spoils of both countries. Uh, and so therefore, the, 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 main thrust, sorry, the main thrust of that needs to be with the Westminster government. So uh, unless you're going to go down possibly another route, then that's, and that's you know, up, up to people to, to pursue that. But the position of my party and the position of the government in Scotland is that, you know, we've laid it out quite clearly that we're aiming to get a referendum 2023. And following that, if that doesn't get agreement, then we move on to using a, a, a plebiscite um, a general election, which, you know, could be happening within months. It could be happening before 2024. So, you know, I think that's where we, we sit at the moment. But the Scottish government doing it on their own and not including the rest of the UK government, then we're not going to get to the place we want to get to because we need to bring them, find a mechanism to get them to the table to negotiate. Can you just say that last If, if there's a yes vote, will they come to the table? Well, I, I think the international community would look at that and say, you know, you guys need to get to the table. And that's that's the whole point of trying to do it. They have uh, putting pressure, pressure, putting pressure, putting pressure to yeah. actually get them to change their minds. Okay. Uh, Neil wants to make a point. Go ahead. Yeah, I, just on, on the question, I mean, you know, I, I agree with, um, with what respect, Douglas is saying, but I, I, I take a slightly different view, not just as a politician, but as a, as a, a, a yeser. Um, but, um, I think if we're going to have a plebiscite election and it's going to be a single issue, then it needs to be conducted as the Yes Movement rather than any political party. So, um, because, because, because it has to be representative 
of the people. And that means, you know, hopefully drawing in um, people from civic society to stand on that ticket, or on a ticket of Independence United or whatever you want to call it. Um, but the, the, the second uh, point I would make is, it's not about going down to Westminster to ask for a negotiation. <laughs> I'm not going to be said that. No, 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 I'm not going to you at all, Douglas, not in the least, and, you know, you know, not at all. What we have to do is to have the guts and gumption to go down and say, right, meeting, now, we're going to discuss, the, we're going to negotiate the terms of withdrawal from the Treaty of Union, and from that, everything else uh, comes out. All of the points that Douglas uh, rightly made about the division of assets, and um, if you take the assets, then you have to uh, consider the liabilities. And uh, I think by having that bold move, then the international community take notice, and that uh, we have to be much less timid. I will write to independence. It's a right <laughs> Yes. yes. So we've got a number of questions. We've also got a couple more online. So I just want to make one point. Um, we're all here because we believe in the same thing. Yes. Uh, we might have slightly different uh, views of how we're going to achieve that. Absolutely. But they're all valid. Yes. So we must keep keep that in mind. It's why we've. It's why us and the team at SSRG created this event is to ensure we could all come here and talk about it and work out a way uh, the future. So on with the questions, this chap. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, uh, thanks very much. I don't have any um, electoral or popular mandate for the question, or it's not only really a question, there's an invitation um, to, to say what I'm about to say, but I would like to, you know, on a personal, as a citizen of Scotland, invite you, Mr. Chapman, and any of your colleagues who might wish to join you and assist you and collaborate with you into some kind of putative reconvention of the estates. Are you willing to consider that or take that, take that invitation to your colleagues in the other house, as, as we say? We'd like to invite you to join the Convention of Estates. Could, could I have a reply now? Are you willing to consider joining a convention of estates? Yes or no? I, well, I, I heard the question. Yes, can you give me a yes or no answer to that? <laughs> well, come on. Come yeah, on. I'll no. give him a wee bit to think about it. No, no, I don't need any time to think about it because I know what the answer is. Uh, what, what we have looked at for a long, long time is how we bring forward uh, the very kind of convention you're thinking about because I think Neil made the point just a few minutes ago that if you're standing on a, a, a platform in a plebiscite election, you know, I think it would need to be some sort of uh, alliance candidate uh, structure that we'd need to have there as well. Uh, but I think the, the big thing from uh, having, I mean, if you think back to P20, um, P2014 or, uh, or for the Scottish, establishing Scottish Parliament, where we had the Constitutional Convention, you know, where the trade unions, the churches, the uh, the political parties, various um, civic groups actually got together. That is an exceptionally strong way of building consensus uh, between people who might not see absolutely eye to eye on the future of Scotland, but are prepared to put their shoulder to the wheel to actually deliver what the people need. And uh, I, I don't say, say that in an arrogant way, but you know, I think if we look at Scotland as it is just now, and you think Scotland doesn't need independence, then you know I think you need to go back and look at the economics. You need to go back and look at social structure, etc. Because we're not we're not the kind of country at the moment because we're in a union that actually I'm, I'm particularly proud of. And I think there are a lot of citizens out there. You're a citizen. I'm a citizen. We've got equal value, got equal say. And I think that using a convention of that kind would actually take the movement forward as a whole and let us. And we're actually like deliver, delivering our, our independence for our, so for our fellow countrymen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a, a method of doing it, yeah, and, and, the, right. the, and the political and civic will, then yes. Of course, brilliant. Of course. 
could I just add, just to, and I'm trying to be really fast. You know, it would, wouldn't it be wonderful if, if, if we could see getting a referendum, and it would be a fair referendum, and they would obey the international rules this time, and we wouldn't have 70% media, you know, if we could, and, and, and I think Doug is absolutely right, this poll that says 55% is, is way underestimating the demand in Scotland right now for independence. I think we could, as long as we could bring back some of that constitutional provision of Scotland for the, for the sovereignty of the people and, and conventions of that kind, that would be what we'd all pray for. We'd go for it and we'd fight tooth and nail to get the kind of Scotland we wanted. If we could guarantee a plebiscite that wouldn't be rigged by Westminster, that it will just do that, you know. Yeah. I think everybody in this room is going to get behind any campaign. I don't think anybody's not going to fight tooth and nail for whatever campaign goes on. But I think we also have to be ready while they're having their wrestling match center stage where they rig the, the, the rules and, and, and make a, a show for the international community to make it look democratic, we need to be going around the side of them. And, and, and that's really what Salvador Nakima writes about, going around the side. So if we can agree our movement's going to need everything it's got, and we're going to have to be off the canny guys because we know what we're up against. And so let's put it all in place and let's be aware we're going out the side door, around the side, because when they when they rig the game, you've got to be ready to, to, to win on our playing field, our rules. I've got two very short points here. Uh, one, uh, uh, I think it was amazing what you did with the Fed. Thank you very much. Very. Uh, 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 yeah. Excellent. Took a time to this, uh, um, uh, Doug, uh, I've got a very short question for you, and a, 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 a tiny one for Neil as well. But basically, uh, you, you said that the people you were talking to the people, uh, and they were always asking you, like, uh, when Scotland was going to be independent. Did you answer them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you say? Yeah. I mean, I mean on, on, on your first point about the ferry, I mean, I think it's absolutely essential that to be a grown up country, you need access to key markets yes. and we need to provide the infrastructure to be able to do that mm -hmm. and you know the, the way that the infrastructure in the UK has been put together over a long long period of time it's actually disadvantaged uh, many exporters from Scotland yeah. uh, almost everything uh, needs to go through southern ports and we've seen uh, more recently some of the difficulties that that, that has caused uh, not just for exporters, but also just for the ordinary travellers who want to go on holiday and so on. So the, the more links that we have, you know, like any other grown up European country has got a coastline, uh, you know, we, we should be having uh, the same amount of access to our seas uh, than any other normal country. Uh, and, and yes, and just a second point, yeah, uh, I am always exceptionally positive about the future of Scotland becoming an independent country, which will not come as a surprise to you, uh, Dave, but uh, I think the, the, the issue is, is more, you know, they, the, the reaction you do get is a beaming smile because they are desperate for Scotland to be independent. <laughs> A wee short one for Neil. Uh, Maybe they're just happy to see me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but when you mentioned the Yes movement, Elrond, did you mean did you mean the the one in two thousand and fourteen or the one that was the front page of the Herald today? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, the, the, the <laughs> She's been waiting for a while. So. Who is he? Mark. I <laughs> She's gone. Um, well, I suddenly thought of another question, but I'll ask my first one. We have a Thatcher lookalike down south. We have a government that is totally, I think, out of control down there. What does Thatcher do to distract the populace? She went to war with the Falklands. Don't you think that Westminster might rile up the English enough to head north? Uh, they seem to think that our resources are theirs anyway. Um, what would be your uh, reaction and do you have an answer to that possible scenario or am I just too imaginative? 
<laughs> well, uh, yesterday, I mean, it was quite interesting because uh, yesterday, but when Andrew Parrott was giving his uh, briefing on on defence, um, that that actually came up as one of the considerations. And and my reflection on that is not necessarily if there's going to be an invasion, but it's actually what is what is Scotland's ability not for a future defence force, but what's our ability to defend our democracy just now? Um, how can we do that? How can we protect ourselves? And that's a really uh, thorny issue. And um, I don't anticipate, as I said, I think they're going to be tied up in knots, um, and not least because Liz Trust doesn't really seem to know what she stands for unless she's briefed in advance. Um, and even then she gets it wrong and can't remember who told her. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, I mean, they've, they've got challenges of their own, but what we absolutely can't do is miss the opportunity to get in there, you know, and I, and I think um, that that's something I know Douglas is up for, I'm up for, and I hope we were, we're all able as, uh, as independents supporting MPs, nationalist MPs, that we're able to capitalise on this disarray that is unfortunately going to have very serious humanitarian consequences across these islands. Hi, um, I was wanting to ask Sarah about the, her plan to have the, the treaty recognised internationally. Sorry, say that. The... Your plan to have the treaty recognised internationally uh, or, or, or adjudicated internationally. Adjudicated is, yeah. is uh, more correct. Presumably if the treaty was recognised or adjudicated on does that not in itself give some international recognition of both parties? Uh, if, if the international community were aware of it um, and, and, and really aware of it, of the, the challenge to it, yes, it would. Mm -hmm. um, look, it looks like, you know, sometimes there's a story about a hole in the dike and the guy in Holland holding his finger in that hole until somebody could come and mend it. It works the other way. Sometimes it's a tiny hole in the dike that you want. <coughs> The international treaty is not understood internationally, basically because of what Albert has talked about, about colonization. So there's an impression that the UK government has given, you know, and all our MPs deal, deal with that when they're, when they're in international forums and so they deal with the impression of, of what the UK is and its stability and the, you know, the stability of the world depends on the stability of the United States. There's all kinds of tricks and, and, and games that have been played, okay? So we haven't brought focus to bear on an argument that is still being upheld by the High Court in 2016, which is an absolute, it's an atrocity in, 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 in terms of justice and constitution and, and, and truth and law. And there it is handed down by the highest court in England. So it matters to get it ruled on. And there's, you, you can't turn an international treaty into a domestic act, into a domestic bill. And that's what they've done. So that opens all kinds of doors for yeah. Scotland. And I think it's much more important than people have realised. Yeah. And I think it's part of the, what's going on on the side while we're being distracted by what's centre stage. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 at this point I'd like to shift the focus because we've got about half an hour left uh, and so uh, what we really need to focus on right now is to, uh, okay, with the, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, I'm Martin from the Freedom Convoy Rate. We've travelled around Scotland since 2014, talking to all the different groups everywhere. And one of the things is, is the Scottish Parliament isn't being hard enough on Westminster. Now, there's a chance for uh, a really serious thing going to happen in the next two or three months, maybe two or three weeks. The, Scottish, the Northern Ireland Protocol is going to be broken, which is an international agreement. Now, the Scottish Parliament should do straight away is completely disband itself and stand on a Scottish election on independence straight away, because it's that, and also the internal market will break to the, uh, the Union yeah. as well. And also the thing that the Scottish uh, referendum is currently controlling now, the Supreme Court, is also a break of the uh, UK.
Okay, I, I, again, I'd really like, uh, in, in the remaining time, I would like to shift the focus to how we go forward. So I'd like any of your questions that you ask to uh, ask you know, the, the, our, our participants or others, what do we do now? So, uh, yeah. yes. Hi there. Um, I suppose I'm really putting this out to quite tall, usually. I've been, do, I've been fighting for Scottish independence now for over 30 years. I've had kept my head cool for 30 years. And you are want me to stay cool while we exhaust all the options of going to the tyrant that's causing all this. I don't see this coming to a happy ending and I'm hearing it different on the streets. You really need to get your ears out there because people are really, really angry. Two more, and then it's the way forward. All right. Last two and questions. Please make them brief. I, um, this weekend for me has been a sort of powerful in connecting who we are with our foundational documents. Um, so my question is kind of about what stories we're telling with the various approaches we're taking. Um, what's been discussed this weekend has got it's got elements of hope and honour to it. It's got you know I think that it's kind of grounded in certainly you know an excitement in the room. Um, the current proposal at Westminster, the the story of that is for me at the moment I think that, that is is very much one of a domestic question set within domestic law, uh, set within the framework of Westminster. The, the story is, is, is very much of, of an expe expectation of um, powerlessness on our part, an expectation of potentially not getting the result we, we're looking for, and, uh, and an expectation of dishonesty from, the, the, from Westminster. Um, the story of that is really one of what we've already got. Um, so there's, there's different stories there, and we have to connect these stories in a way that the people that are going to vote on these things understand uh, and that resonate with them. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of either or um, situations. I think my question to the panel is really, how do we connect these stories? You know, we have a we have a process that's underway at the moment. We have, I think, some fantastic um, excitement in the room about the possibilities of a, adding an international uh, treaty-based approach to that. Uh, through some of the work that, that, that uh, some of the people on the panel have been doing, so the question is really how do we tie those together? As a, as a, you know, at the, at the moment all we've got is all we've got is the story of, of of get a referendum or have a plebiscite. How do we tie that into something more than that? <laughs> do you want to have a crack at that? Yeah, I, I think there's a really straightforward response to that, um, which is we've got. Uh, uh, an extant humanitarian, humanitarian <laughs> crisis, um, and you know the cost of living crisis. That should be um, a, a campaign all of its own, all of its own. The injustice of that in a, an energy-rich Scotland. Uh, it should mirror the poll tax um, uh, protests, peaceful demonstrations. We, we can't, regardless of constitutional position. This cannot be acceptable. And so that is a, that's, that lays down a marker and that is directly to, related to how we are governed and how we choose to govern ourselves. Uh, and so I think that is a way to connect because there, there, it's not just people who've been living through deprivation for the last 10 years who are impacted now. It's everybody is impacted by Tory policy now. And there are more and more people going to be impacted, sadly, as interest rates go up, mortgage rates go up, and people realise that they can't afford to get from one end of the week to the other. One more question, and then, we, then we're going to go on to the way forward. So, uh, yes, the last question. My question is about the way forward. <laughs> And it's not a question, it's a suggestion. Um, I'm just thinking about the amount of brain power there is in this room here and on the people who are participating in Zoom. Uh, so, for example, going back to the constitutional issue, I'm certainly not an expert and I would like to seek enlightenment. I would like to hear from experts like Sarah 
Sarah, sorry, which whatever you pronounce it. Um, so I would suggest that if we are going to move forward, sorry, is that too close to my mouth? Uh, if we are going to move forward, why don't we um, model uh, a way forward by using the sort of citizens' assembly model at conferences like this, have more round table discussions so that all the voices in the room are on the table, all the voices that are out there in Zoom are on the table, people get an opportunity to digest the number of constitutions that are out there. I know Common Bill has one, uh, you have one here, Mark. Uh, you talked about the one for the claim of rights. I don't know how many constitutions there are for a, an independent Scotland. I would like to see them. I would like to digest them. And I'm sure lots of people in here would too. And I'm sure there are lots of intelligent people in here who would like to express opinions about that. And I think that the way to do that, to get all the voices on the table, is to do more of a round table session and spend a lot less time on breaks and more time getting people's opinions on the table and, and making some constructive um, ways forward for a constitution. And that's just a suggestion for a way forward. Okay, okay. and that segues very that segues very well into what I wanted to talk about now. Yeah. Because we want to, uh, I have, we, most of you have this uh, sheet. We have these, uh, we have the, these nine uh, areas of uh, development that we want to, uh, that we want to engage in. Uh, the routes to independence uh, beyond the, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, if, the, if there is no referendum, if and uh, if there is some way that this legislatory election is blocked, what are the other means? Uh, the issue of currency and taxation, uh, language, culture, and identity, land ownership, taxation, and natural resources, media ownership and regulation, defense requirements and policy in Scotland, international law, relations, and recognition, strategic infrastructure and trade, and Scotland's constitution. So, we, we, have, we have one chap that's got one last point okay. about the way forward. Okay. I understand that, that's fine. That's fine. and I understand one of our panelists had to, to leave just now. Um, I'm so pleased that both of them decided to join SSRG officially by choosing their color scheme. <laughs> they obviously planned it. Right, one quick, quick question and then uh, we'll carry on. Hello. Uh, very, very short answer. You, you asked a question. You asked for short, short answers or short suggestions. My suggestion is uh, Scottish UDI. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, do you have what would be your suggestions for the way forward? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a bit unfair because I've I've not been part of your your discussions okay. over the whole period, so I think it's more for the floor to. Okay. Okay. And, okay. Uh, okay. Sure uh, so, um, yeah. all right. Well, uh, what? No. Who? Uh, and so we so we do what we would like to do is to begin to organize into working groups. We certainly don't have enough time, you know, enough the scope, of, you know, this afternoon uh, to do that. But what I can say is that I will, uh, we will be working within the next week or so on the SSRG website. We have all of your emails, and we will be able to begin to do. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sort of like we we uh, the, we had a big salvo um, breakout group yesterday, and we or I think we organized into four. Existing okay. working groups. Okay. So um, you know we all clearly self work. It's going to be working with and through the SSRG. <laughs> so probably we don't need to duplicate the working groups that are, that are set up under okay. Salvo. Okay. Okay. Um, so I can tell you what those are to okay. eliminate to eliminate what remains. Okay. Um, we have a working group on the constitutional emergency, which is Section Thirty Eight of the EU Withdrawal Bill mm. and the, the the new Act of Union. We have a working group researching the common good provision mm -hmm. of the Scottish Constitution. We have a working group on the land emergency in terms of the disposal of Scottish assets, particularly land. Um, and oh, what was the fourth? Oh, <laughs> direct, uh, 
Yeah, uh, direct action. I think we actually had a bit, but those are those are those are actually going to be covered, and all that research will be shared with the SSRG and feedback in. Mm -hmm. So we'll do we'll do some of that, that heavy Sorry. lifting. Okay. You want to suggest it? Well, while they're talking, I'll just let the, the Salvo members know. We've now got, officially got a, a Facebook um, Salvo West group um, that's got 63 members now. And then, and then um, just ask those who are forming groups to make sure you meet up before we leave today and uh, end off. So, sorry. Sorry, David. Before, uh, before we call an end to our conference, you've all got a sheet of paper with all the main uh, issues and topics on, okay? Um, we would like we would like uh, everyone, even in the spaces provided under the subjects, to write what your idea of going forward, and then leave them with us. And, and what we'll do is uh, collate them. Okay, and if they might want to put their name on it as well. If you would like to put your name uh, at the top, um, but then in between, write down what you think should happen, and hand them in. We will collate them all and uh, list them. At a later date on our website. Good idea. Good idea okay, that way. Yes, an email address. It's so good having your mother come to remind to remind you to remind you what to say. Uh, thanks, mum. Uh, yes, if you can if you can put your name and email address, that would be great. I have enough. I have enough trouble pronouncing mother. Uh, so that's what we'd like you to do because what we originally wanted was to have breakout rooms and everyone was going to work around the clock. But of course, it's it's not quite worked out that way. Um, but this way, we'll be able to feed back because we're planning after this to do roadshows around the country which will cover many of the same subjects, but be more focused in local areas. So this is part of the campaign, yeah. you know? We're not all hanging around till 2023 to find out whether or not we get a referendum or not. We are moving and this is, this is part of it. So I think that would be the best way of uh, moving forward, if you agree. I do, I do. Uh... So notes, we can break and I think, I think the coffee's available. Just, well, I, I just remembered the other group. It's the ID, the uh, the Scottish ID working group. Scottish so, ID working group. So that that that's where we're going to have people doing heavy lifting. Yeah. Consider that is going to be coming back and forth between SSRG and Salvo. Okay. Okay. And to the people at home, including the anonymous question askers, <laughs> we've had a few interesting questions. Um, thank you very much for your support as well, uh, even though you couldn't be here. Okay, um, so uh, as you're writing, take your time, no problem, but I just wanted to thank you so much all for coming. Uh, this is the beginning of a process, not the end. Uh, I we hope to have some sort of meeting, as I said, at the end of October. We don't know what form that will take. Uh, in, the, in the next uh, couple of weeks, I on the website, we've got all your email addresses and we'll begin to set up working groups. We can, be, we can have Zoom meetings. In these different working groups all of this stuff has yet to be organized but it was very important that we have this initial meeting we get to know each other and that we can be, begin to see who's pe what people's talents are what people's abilities are and where they would like to contribute in developing these themes that we have uh, so thank you so much for coming and uh, we and uh, the meeting is adjourned yes. I thought that since we did get agreement on some kind of convention of, of the estates, uh, constitutional convention, which is something obviously Salvo is really, really um, keen on, it might be nice to finish with a quote from the last Scottish Constitutional Convention that took the claim of right just so far.
and we're going to take it an awful lot further. Do you remember what he said? He said, but what if the voice from Westminster says, we, need, we say no, and we are the state? The canon retorted, well, we say yes, and we are the people. Yeah. 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 Yeah.